Good morning. This is Dr. Chet Rehal. Today my guest is Dr. Joseph Murray of the Mayo Division of Gastroenterology. Dr. Murray, in, in the August issue, this year's Mayo Clinic Proceedings, published a very interesting paper describing a possible association between an angiotensin receptor blocker and sprue. Joe, welcome. Thank you, indeed. Assistant, tell, tell us about this very interesting study that you published so, and observation. So these are really, this is clinical observation. Yeah. Um, I, I see patients with sprue. Now typically sprue is a severe malabsorptive disorder with diarrhea, weight loss, and, and the usual kind of evidence of malnutrition. And most typically it occurs because of celiac disease. That's a gluten sensitive disorder. And that's a large part of my practice. Yeah. However, I started to see patients who had a similar syndrome, but quite severe, but probably not, re not responding to gluten withdrawal. Mm. And it seemed to have some unusual features. These patients were often quite ill, very dehydrated, would be hospitalized often multiple times, mm. hypomagnesemic, hypokalemic. And it turned out that two patients in a row on two successive days that I saw in my clinic both asked me about a, a possible association with medication. So the patients asked you? The patients, the first two patients asked me. And these patients were both on a drug I had never used called Olmosartan, which is an angiotensin receptor blocker. Brand name is Benicar. So I'd never used this drug. So we then started, as I started to see more of these patients with this atypical sprue, it, it seemed that a pattern was evolving and mm. that many of these were on Olmosartan. Really? And we then had to work through a process of elimination. You know, this is not celiac disease. This is not some other condition. And really the only common thread between what we reported were 22 patients who had this quite clinically severe syndrome was Olmosartan. And then these, pa these patients all responded to withdrawal of the drug. And eventually mm -hmm. we were able to show that most of them had healed their intestine because this disease was, was characterized by severe injury to the small intestine. So you performed uh, mucosal biopsies, yep. is that what you did? So these patients were originally detected because they had, um, you know, they had this severe syndrome, their gastroenterologist did an endoscopy, found damage in the intestine that looked like celiac sprue. Histo and histologically, histologically was it Histologically looked very similar, loss of the villus uh, structure, we call it villus atrophy and inflammation. And that's what led them to, to assume a diagnosis of celiac disease. Well, what made it different is that the blood tests for celiac disease were negative, which made us think that this is not typical celiac disease to begin with. And really, after we kind of worked through these patients and we realized, you know, they're, they've got a different phenotype, they're more severe, and they often have what we call collagen deposition. So this is a scar tissue laid down on the surface according to a significant number. They had irritation or inflammation of the stomach and the colon in, in a significant number of these. But the good thing was that once we removed the drug, often within days or weeks, the patients had a dramatic improvement and complete recovery was obvious in most patients. That's amazing. Joe, did, were any of these patients ever re-challenged just to really clinch it? Or we, was, was that these, something that no, was, these, yeah. these, these were patients who were so ill that, that they were not willing to be re-challenged. You know, some of them lost as much as 100 pounds in weight, you know, 40 to 50 kilos in weight. So these were some, some patients were substantially malnourished, had been hospitalized, some had renal impairment, pre-renal azotemia associated with their de dehydration. So we weren't prepared to re-challenge them. However, two patients inadvertently got re-challenged, went back on the medication and got ill quite quickly. Uh, and one patient had reported that when her insurance changed in the past, she kept a journal, that she was able to note that when she stopped the drug because it was switched to a different ARB, her diarrhea got better. And then when she wasn't able to tolerate that ARB for different reasons, she went back on the old Masartan and her diarrhea came back, but she hadn't made the connection at the time. Amazing. But she had documented it in her journal. So, so I think that there was reasonable evidence that this is, these are, are associated. It really fulfills Koch's postulates, doesn't it? Yeah, almost completely. Not, yeah. not, not, I mean, it, it's probably quite rare. You know, the other thing is I'm seeing patients from a national referral base of a very unusual syndrome. So as you know, there have been quite a few studies, you know, large randomized controlled trials of using this and other ARBs that yes. really didn't report any significant excess of GI symptoms. So I think this is a relatively rare syndrome. So really an idiosyncratic reaction. Quite probably. Have you observed this with any of the other ARBs that and are used more commonly in? Uh, not, I would say not with the degree of certainty that we have with Olmosartan. There are, however, one or two patients I've seen with other, on other ARBs who have diarrheal syndromes that seem to respond. So it may not be limited to this particular ARB. 
Is there something about this particular drug or its potency or, or its molecular mechanism um, of action that may predispose to this? Well, it's, it's, the olmastartan is a little peculiar in that one, it is a, a very powerful inhibitor uh, of the angiotensin receptor. It's also activated largely within the gut mucosa. Um, it's given as a prodrug. It's not particularly soluble, but then it's activated by, de we think, deesterification within the gut mucosa, which might, I suppose, theoretically mean that there's very powerful inhibition right in the intestine. Well, Joe, this is a very interesting observation and one that I'm sure that uh, our audience out there, there will be people who will see this, and, and I hope that uh, uh, your article does bring uh, some attention to this and we will make it available for download from this uh, website. So thank you very much for, for coming this morning. Thank you for having me. Our, my guest today has been uh, Dr. Joe Murray from our Division of Gastroenterology who in August of 2012 reported a novel observation between Olmosartan and the development of, of sprue-like symptoms in patients uh, treated for hypertension. So Joe, thanks again and have a good day.